Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Kids Storytime with the Chinese American Museum. I'm Kevina Quesario, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator at CAM. It is great to see some familiar faces and a big welcome to all our new friends joining us here today. I also like to thank our FCAM board and staff. I hope you're all excited as I am because today Ms. Rita and I will be welcoming a very special author to read her book, It Must Be Autumn. All of today's registrants will be entered in a giveaway for a signed copy of the book, It Must Be Autumn. The winner will be emailed that they have won and will be asked for more information. We would like to give a big thank you to author Michelle Wang for gifting her book. To have the best reading experience, I recommend watching this event and speak with you. Let's get started. Please let's welcome Ms. Rita from the Chinatown Branch Library. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Ms. Rita, just as Ms. Kavine said, and I'm here to tell you a little story first as a warm up for our special guest author, Michelle Wang. And in the spirit of fall and winter, you can see I have these winter figures behind me. I thought I'd tell you a cozy story about one of our favorite things to do, which is to, to sleep and to nap. So this will be a very comforting story and it's actually based on this book. It is this book, The Full Moon at the Napping House by Audrey Wood, illustrated by her husband, Don Wood. So I will tell you the story with some flannel figures. And to do that well, I will share my screen and hopefully you can see my story. There we go, oops, it's a little bit blurry. <laughs> but I think you can all see it. All right, I'm gonna remove some of the pieces so we can get started um, a little bit better. Okay, so just ignore this little sheet of paper, please. <laughs> all right, this is a story of the full moon at the napping house and I will make it a little darker so you can see the screen a little bit better. But it goes like this. There was a house, a full moon house. Just imagine the moon shining where everyone is restless. And in that house, there is a bed. A nice, comfy, cozy bed. Do you see the pink pillows, the comforter? There was a wide awake bed in a full moon house where everyone is restless. And in that bed, there was a granny. Look at the granny. There was a sleepless granny in a wide awake bed in a full moon house where everyone is restless. And with that granny, there is a child, a fidgety child with a sleepless granny in a wide awake bed in a full moon house where everyone is restless. And with that child, there is of course, arf, arf, a dog, a playful dog with a fidgety child with a sleepless granny in a wide awake bed in a full moon house where everyone is restless. They can't rest. And with that dog, meow, there is a cat. Let's look at our cat friend over here a prowling cat with a playful dog, with a fidgety child, with a sleepless granny, in a wide awake bed, in a full moon house, where everyone is restless. And with that cat, everyone, can you guess what comes next? There is a squeak, squeak, mouse. There he is. A worried mouse with a prowling cat, with a playful dog, with a fidgety child, with a sleepless granny, in a wide awake bed, in a full moon house, where everyone is restless. And with that cat. And then after that, there is a little chirping cricket who is singing his song to the worried mouse and the prowling cat, and the playful dog, and the fidgety child, and the sleepless granny in a wide awake bed in a full moon house where everyone is restless. Everybody, do you know what kind of sound a cricket makes? It rubs its legs together and it goes choo -choo, choo -choo, <laughs> kind of like that sound. You'll know it because sometimes it's so loud when it's the only sound and you can't go to sleep. Now, 
a full moon song. There was a full moon song and it soothed the mouse. The full moon song that the cricket sang. It soothed the mouse who calmed the cat, who gentled the dog, who snuggled the boy, who hugged the granny in the dreamy bed in the full moon house where no one now is restless and they all went to sleep. And everybody, I would love for you to see some of the illustrations in this book. It's a very sweet story. So this is when they were all together singing and dancing and being overwhelmed. And then what happened? Little Cricket came along, sang a little song, and everybody started to slowly go to bed and be comforted. And look at the granny is reading a book. Plus, the grandchild was hugging the grandmother. Oh, now they're reading the story together, and the cat is resting. And they were in that full moon house where no one now is restless. There we go. And that is the napping house. The full moon at the napping house. The napping house is the original story. So that's just a little fall story for you. And it's a great book to read because it has a lot of repetition of words. It's very comforting. It's a good nighttime story. It's one of those like like those books about like um, animals eating of things and they all add up. <laughs> and then at the end, the animal coughs them all out, something like that. So I will stop screen sharing and introduce our guest speaker, who is a very good author, she wrote a book about autumn and her name is Michelle Wang. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about her before she starts, Michelle lives in Toronto, Canada with her husband, four children, and a couple of jokester squirrels outside her kitchen window. When she's not cheering on her favorite hometown sports team or playing random songs each time she walks by a piano, Michelle can be found reading a book to avoid cleaning her messy house. <laughs> Michelle and her family are excellent leaf pile jumpers. Maybe you are too. Thank you. Let's have Michelle come on. Oh, I'm going to read to you, It Must Be Autumn. One Sunday, Mother looked out the window and saw the leaves had changed colors. It must be autumn, she said. I'd better go and get ready. How do leaves change color every year? It happens automatically. The mother went outside and looked at the leaves. I know just what to do, she said with a smile. I'll shake them and rake them and take them and make them into a great big pile. What did the leaves say to Autumn? I'm falling for you. On Monday, father looked out the window and saw the birds flying south. It must be autumn, he said. I better go and get ready. Why do birds fly south in the fall? Because it's too far to walk. So father went outside and looked at the birds and the leaves. I know just what to do, he said with a grin. Take them and rake them and take them and make them into a great big what did a tree say to his best friend? I believe in you. On Tuesday, sister looked out the window and saw the squirrels gathering nuts. It must be autumn, she said. I better go and get ready. What kind of nut doesn't have a shell? A dough nut. Sister looked, went outside and looked at the squirrels, the birds, and the leaves. I know just what to do, she said with a chortle. 
shake them and rake them and take them and make them into a great big pile. What did a squirrel say to his girlfriend? I'm nuts about you. On Wednesday, brother looked out the window and saw the days were getting shorter. It must be autumn, he said. I better go and get ready. What did Summer say to Autumn? Are you following me again? The brother went outside and looked at the earlier sunset, the birds, the squirrels, and the leaves. I know just what to do, he said with a guffaw. I'll shake them and rake them and take them and make them into a great big pile. What is the tree's least favorite month of the year? September. On Thursday, grandmother looked out the window and saw the temperature getting colder. It must be autumn, she said. I'd better go and get ready. Why don't trees like going back to school in the fall? Because they're easily stumped. Grandmother went outside, all bundled up, and looked at the earlier sunset, the squirrels, the birds, and the leaves. I know just what to do, she said with a chuckle. I'll shake them and rake them and take them and make them into a great big pile. How do trees get on the internet? They log on. On Friday, Grandfather looked out the window and saw the apples and vegetables ready to harvest. It must be autumn, he said. I better go and get ready. What do you use to fix a jack-o'-lantern? A pumpkin patch. So, after munching on an apple, Grandfather went outside all bundled up and looked at the earlier sunset, the squirrels, the birds, and the leaves. It must be autumn, he said. I know just what to do with a giggle. Shake them and rake them and take them and make them into a great big pile. What do you get when you drop a pumpkin? Squash. On Saturday, everyone looked out the window with a smile, a grin, a chortle, a guffaw, a chuckle, and a giggle. It must be autumn, they said. How do you start a tree race? On your bark, get set, grow. Mother, father, sister, brother, grandmother, and grandfather all ran outside into the beautiful autumn afternoon. You know just what to do. We shook them and raked them and took them and made them into a great big pile. Now we are ready. What happened when winter comes? Autumn leaves. Happy fall, y'all. That's the end of the story. Over to you, Miss Rita. That was so cute. I loved all the ponderful jokes. <laughs> like they were so funny. I'm a real big fan of those squirrels. Thank you so much. Let's see. Oh, Damien Chung said, those squirrels are funny. Damien Chung, sorry. <laughs> yeah, and if you have any other comments to add, you can put them in the chat. So cute. All right, well, um, I guess we're ready to sing a goodbye song, unless anybody has anything else to say. And we did hear that it was um, somebody's birthday today. Haddon, are you here? Can you raise your hand if you're here? Somebody, oh, Ella said, we love the, the songs. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, love the jokes. Oh, yeah, thanks, Kavine. All right, well, oh, um, yes, I'm ready to sing happy birthday to Haddon, so we'll, we'll get to that. Oh, the puppets. We had a comment about the puppets saying they love the puppets. Those were so great. And um, 
Michelle, did you explain that those are your sons doing the voices? Did you mention that at the beginning? If you didn't know that, it's uh, her sons. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're gonna sing happy birthday to Haddon. If we could just join in and enjoy it together, we're going to sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I hope you have a really good one. The beginning of fall, the beginning of the cozy season. It's a wonderful thing. All right, let's see if we have any other comments. Squirrels are really funny. Love the story. Oh, Sienna and Skylar said they super duper love the story. One of your best books. <laughs> it is truly a wonderful book. Oh, and Ella says happy birthday to Haddon. So very happy birthday. And um, before we go, I'd just like to showcase um, the book that we'll be doing next. We'll be reading next week. It's called Lala's Words by Gracie Zhang and, or Gracie Zhang, depending on how you say it. And it's a really cute story about how kindness um, encourages people to, or even plants to grow. All right. Oh, oh, we have a goodbye song too that we're gonna sing, which is our See You Later Alligator song, okay? So we're gonna do that. And if you know the hand motions to the song, go ahead and join along. But we basically just wave and do whatever the animals are doing. We're going to sing, oops, in the tune of the Clementine song, okay? So it goes, see you later, alligator. We're gonna give that a try, okay? See you later. Kavine, do you have anything to add? Anything that we missed? No, of course. Well, I do want to start off with a little closing, but I want to give it back to Michelle and say thank you so much for being here. And if you have any uh, remarks to say, please feel free to let us know. Yes. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, if you have any remarks, if not, no worries. I can go ahead and close it out. Oh, no, I'm good. Just, uh, the squirrels have other stories coming up soon, so you guys can guess what the next book might be. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds really exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close it out. Well, thank you, Ms. Rita, for being here today. And of course, a big thank you to you, Michelle Wang, for joining us today and for reading your book, It Must Be Autumn. I hope you all enjoyed today's program. Keep an eye out for our next story time next week on November 17th with Ms. Rita. A big shout out to Panda Express for sponsoring today's Kids Story Time. You can learn more about CAM by visiting our website at camlab.org. Thank you all for joining Kids Story Time today. Bye, everyone. <laughs>